through salt and light with Pastor Randy Mitchell. Jesus said to his disciples, Ye are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Salt and Light confronts the difficult and often controversial issues that affect today's culture. The only hope for this generation is for more people to follow Jesus Christ and for his followers to be salt and light in their community. Pastor Randy will discuss the Bible solutions to help us know what God says about the problems we face today. Salt and Light is a ministry of Temple Baptist Church in Statesville, North Carolina. Here's your host, Pastor Randy Mitchell. Good morning. Welcome to Salt and Light Radio Broadcast. Uh, glad that you have joined us. Uh, we appreciate all of you listeners, and it is a joy to be with you here today. I'm joined by my trusty sidekick, Glenn Coppinger. How's Glenn today? Things are all right. Things are all right. You making things happen? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Excellent. Well, appreciate you uh, helping me out with this very, listen, folks, extremely important topic, a topic that uh, so many people are talking about and thinking about what's going on in our culture today. Uh, We need to weigh in on what the Bible says because um, everybody's got an opinion. And, you know, this day and age with media, technology and so forth, I mean, we go from one hot topic to another. You turn on the news and, um, you know, uh, last week it was COVID-19 and it's been that for about three months. I mean, uh, it's like there's nothing else going on in our land that's newsworthy other than the coronavirus. And then, of course, here in recent times, uh, the topic has switched and, you know, people have so many passionate opinions about what's going on in today's culture. But, um, you know, when it's all said and done, Glenn, and the only thing that really matters is the truth. And it's very difficult, uh, nearly impossible to get the truth from the media sources that we have today. Uh, extremely biased, uh, leaving certain information out, uh, emphasizing the information that supports a particular person's agenda and their opinion and so forth. It's just impossible to, to know what the truth is. But I'm glad, Glenn, that I can open up my Bible I got a King James version of the Bible right here, and I'm glad that I can have confidence that every word that I read is true and accurate, pure, preserved, uh, that it comes directly from God, and that I can know what God has to say, because regardless of what modern Christianity says, I believe that the whole counsel of God is always relevant. It never ceases to be relevant. It's not old-fashioned. It's relevant. It has the answers and gives the understanding for everything that we go through in our life and in our culture. And I'm glad that we've got the Word of God. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the Bible says that we're to, uh, you know, seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. Uh, it talks about searching the Scriptures. It talks about studying the Scriptures. And there's no excuse for somebody here today, right now, here, right here, right now, uh, not to be able to find the truth because it, a mark of immaturity, especially on the spiritual sense of things, comes along of, well, they all say the same thing or we're all going to the same place or they all they all have God that they worship and follow. And once you actually start comparing with what's said to what the Bible says, then you start seeing that differences are out there. And, until, and there's no excuse. You're going to have, it's, you know, when you get tested in school, you get tested on what you should have known or you could have known. And, uh, you know, because you, you've been given information, you've been given, if you didn't study that information, then you get a test on that. And then it's, <laughs> well, okay, you obviously didn't study. And so we're all going to stand and we're going to give an account for the things that we could have known because the Bible has it here for us. You know, it's interesting. People will pay thousands and thousands of dollars to go and get a higher education. And when they take a test and the instructor asks them a question on the test, they they have to have the absolute right answer. They don't say, well, you know, who am I to say what the right answer is? Mm-hmm. They don't tell their professor that. Well, who, who am I to answer this question? But here we've got the words of God for free, 
And people run to these little cliches that sound so wise and sound so nice, but they are dishonoring God by saying that we don't actually have his words when God has told us that he had promised to preserve it. So anyhow, I'm glad we've got the authority of the word of God. And what we need to know is what God, God needs to weigh in on these issues. Forget about man's opinion. Everybody's got, you know, one person said opinions are like armpits. Everybody's got two of them and usually they stink. You've never heard that one? I sure have. That's kind of a stinky thing to say, though. (laughs) It is. But what matters is what God has to say about any topic. And our topic today, folks, is violence in the last days. We are seeing more and more violence in our culture and and not just in things that are going on that we we see in the news today listen violence is cross-cultural uh violence in in today's society it crosses all kinds of gender barriers all kinds of racial barriers all kinds of religious barriers we see violence there's terrorism there's all kinds of tensions and problems there's entertainment that makes a sport out of severe violence. You know, since this is a, a, a radio talk show, I've got to weigh in with the opinion of of a preacher, of a pastor. Personally, Brother Glenn, I don't find any entertainment value in watching a couple of women beat the pulp out of one another. And yet that's a multi-million dollar industry and people find that entertaining. And I, I just think that that is a, that is just a sickening thing. It's just, it's not good. It's not entertaining. And even Christians under the guise of, well, you know, God wants us to be men and, you know, I'm all for competing and I'm not a soccer mom mentality guy. But at the same token, what the word of God says about violence, it's not something that should be considered a sport. The Bible says fools make a mock at sin. And so we've just got a culture today that is so inundated with violence, violence, one form of rioting or another. And listen, there are all different forms of rioting. What do people live for today? They live for the party. And so, you know, rioting and, and, and violence are not always synonymous. In some cases, you've got rioting. You just got a bunch of drunkenness and reveling and people uh, saying things and doing things. It's just acting like a bunch of godless heathen. And I, I know I sound like I'm venting, but you know what? I'm, I'm a, a God called me to preach over 30 years ago and it's sometimes when i see all of these things that are going on and i find glenn that the pulpits in america seem so silent and so afraid afraid to weigh in on these matters and it just stirs my spirit kind of like the apostle paul when he was on mars hill and it says his spirit was stirred within him when he saw the whole city given to idolatry I see a whole country given to violence in one form or another, and it just seems like nobody's weighing in on it. So violence in the last days. The Bible says a lot about it. Brother Glenn, help me out here. Explain to our listeners, what do we mean when we say the last days? Yeah, the last days are are, uh, uh, the time here when uh, things start to wrap up. We're going to be looking for a rapture. We're going to be looking for Christ to call his bride out. And then uh, there's going to be some changes that take place. Uh, And there's some things that as Christians we can see as the times are, uh, that those times are changing, things that to be able to look for. And uh, there's some things that we can see some typology in the scripture. Uh, But again, things that, again, as a Christian, there's no excuse to be ignorant of where things are at in society. And you can definitely tell where a Christian is at because out of the heart, the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And so when you're just simply uh, plugged into the mainstream media and you're just getting a healthy dose of what uh, any of the, the pushed agendas are, you'll hear those things come out of people's mouths. And so you'll know where they're at. Mm-hmm. And, the, and again, it's the, again, there's that, always that, well, how are we to know? How, yeah. how can we tell? How, how do we know? 
Yeah, well, we know because the Word of God says quite clearly that Jesus Christ, our Creator, our King, that He is coming back to this earth. When we talk about the last days, we're talking about the return of Jesus Christ. And boy, things are going to change then. If you're discontent, if you don't like the way that things are right now, if you're righteous, if you're saved, if you love God, I got good news for you. Jesus is going to come back and he's going to right all of the wrongs. But until then, we are left in a sin-cursed world. Each and every one of us are sin-cursed ourselves. Uh, we came into this world as sinners, and the only thing that can make us righteous, according to the Word of God, is the blood of Jesus Christ, being saved, being cleansed, ha- having a, 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 a regeneration, becoming a new creature, and having a new spirit and a new mind and so forth. And so we need to, st- Christians need to quit being so worldly and need to start being spiritual. And then lost people, hey, the thought of Jesus coming back, if that doesn't scare you as a lost person it ought to because he's not coming back as a little baby in a manger he's coming back as a lion he's coming back on a white horse of war and vengeance and he's going to come back he's letting letting the world and the devil have their day but his day is coming and these last days there is no doubt in my mind glenn that we are getting closer and closer and closer because everything i read in the word of god points to the fact that what we're seeing around us is what God said would happen. Now, I've got a list of things, of prophecies, different points that are made in the scripture about violence in the last days, but because I can tell I'm a little revved up here this morning, and so I don't want to dominate and leave out some of your thoughts, so I'm going to toss the ball your way, Brother Glenn, and uh, what is the the first point that you'd like to bring to our listeners regarding our topic, violence in the last days? Yeah, you know, one of the things that, again, as Christians with where we sit right now, the Bible says in Titus that looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So as Christians, we need to be looking for Jesus Christ's return. The second thing that comes up here, and one of my kids had asked me this the other day, but as a Christian, the Bible says this, is that in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, it says, for though we walk in the flesh... We do not war after the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth exalteth itself. So there's some things as Christians that, you know, our battle, um, no matter when it it is right here, right now, it's it's not a physical battle. There's a spiritual battle that's going on. But, you know, what what we look at here is, um, you know, as we as we start looking towards these things, the Bible says that, uh, you know, we have some examples. We have a past and you can learn things from history. And the Bible says that, you know, like it, it, you think back to like Lot and you think back to, to Noah. And mm-hmm. the Bible says that there are some things that have, that went on at those times that characterized the days that those men lived in. And, uh, you know, and it says that, you know, as it was in the days of Noah, as it was in the days of Lot. So there's some things that we can look back. So if we have some insight, you can go to the Old Testament see some things that were going on, and then have an idea of what we're going to be expecting as these last days approach. So Jesus told us clearly and plainly that in the days when he returns, it's going to be a lot like it was in the days of Noah and in the days of Lot. Now, this is what the Bible says regarding the days of Noah. Genesis chapter 6, verse number 11. This is God's perspective. He's looking down upon the human race, and it says the The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Violence is the sin that God speaks of specifically regarding the days of Noah. Verse 13 of the same chapter, and God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me. God saying, I'm getting ready to judge man whom I've created for the earth is filled with violence through them and behold I will destroy them with the earth so that's what God 
thinks about violence, when he looks down upon the human race, and you know what, uh, we, we got all kinds of domestic violence that's going on in our culture, we've got violence against women, we've got violence and racial tension, we've got violence from people that are in authority that ought to be righteous and ought to be doing the right thing, and uh, as I've already mentioned, violence is one of the major forms of entertainment in our culture today, and no no doubt God must be looking down upon America today and saying, wow, they are they are becoming more and more corrupt. And uh, there's going to come a time when God's not going to see a whole lot of difference between America and the culture that was in existence before the flood. And God isn't going to destroy us with the flood. He promised that he would never do that again. When you see that rainbow in the sky, that is a token that God said, I'll never destroy the earth with a flood again. But there is a judgment coming. There is a period of time called the tribulation period in which God is going to rain down. You talk about plagues and pestilences and natural disasters. It's going to come upon this earth like something that this earth has never, ever seen before. And that promise is sure. Brother Glenn, I'm so glad I've got a promise from the Word of God that I'm not going to be here when that takes place. But some of our listeners might be because I uh, I don't have much doubt that we are getting closer and closer and closer. That clock's ticking. And one of these days, that second hand of God's clock is going to hit that point. And uh, you know what's going to break loose on this earth. And uh, God's going to judge the earth in many ways for the violence that he sees in uh, the human race. All right. Yeah. Numbers 35 verse 33. Um, you know, it's talking about that violence. And so, you know, back in those days in Genesis, it talked about how, uh, you know, there's just men's thoughts were wicked continually. The Bible says in Numbers 35, 33. So ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, for blood it defileth the land, and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. So there's some thing, there's some instruction that's being given there specifically, but you see there that as this violence, a lot of the violence that uh, takes place, there's blood that is shed. That blood pollutes the land and uh, we, if you've ever flown into a city and and uh, that's typically known for uh, a lot of violence is there be a there's a spirit that that you can feel if you're if you're paying attention to it you know not trying to be all weird and you know and like spooky feeling but there 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 is a spirit in certain areas where there's been a lot of bloodshed that's right and you know what in many cases, those who participate in violence, it's like Jesus said. He said, they that live by the sword shall die by the sword. Uh, we watch all of these, you know, superhero movies and, and we watch all these things. Um, the, uh, the, the, I mean, the, the, the tough guy that comes in, the Rambo and, you know, the guy who takes on the whole Vietnamese army and all by himself. And, and, and some people think that, oh, I, that's what I am in my own mind, but they don't realize that you take up the sword and you're more than likely going to die by the sword. And we think that the answer is uh, more violence, but God says that if a man sheds the blood of a man, then by man his blood should be shed. But that isn't for just anyone to take matters in their own hand. In Romans chapter number 13, God established that it is human government that he ordained as the source of authority. Yes, imperfect human government. When Paul wrote Romans 13, you had, you had Caesar. Uh, who was in authority over basically the known Bible world at that day. And he was not a righteous man, but still it is God's way. And here's something that I want to make sure that we don't leave out here today. And this is a principle. I grew up hearing this principle, but I don't ever hear it anymore. Listen to what the word of God says in Romans 12, verse number 19. It says, dearly beloved, Avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. Give place unto wrath. God doesn't say that it's wrong for you to be angry about an injustice, but he says give place to it. Manage it. Don't take vengeance yourself because here's the last part of that verse. For it is written, vengeance is mine. 
I will repay, saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. When we reciprocate violence with violence, what we're saying is that I'm a God unto myself. I'm going to take care of this matter the way that I see fit. And you know what the reality of it is? We talked about how that we can't know the whole truth behind anything. God in heaven looks into the hearts of men. He alone knows every man's motive. He he has perfect knowledge of every man's perception. Mm-hmm. And he alone is the only one that is qualified to do justice and to take vengeance upon a violent act. And when we take matters in our own hand and reciprocate, I'm not talking about self-defense here, Mm -hmm. okay? I I believe in self-defense. And and Jesus, before he went to the cross, he even even made it clear to the disciples that you may have to use a sword. And they said, here's two swords. He said, that's enough. He didn't say, you know, uh, stockpile all of your weapons and become a militia. He just yeah. said, okay, have enough to where you can adequately defend yourself. But don't be looking for that. Because if you take up the sword, you're going to die by the sword. So we need to recognize the fact that our God is all-knowing and all-powerful. And if we will leave justice to him... Hey, he'll take care of it. He knows exactly how to take care of it. It may not be when we want it to happen and how we want it to happen, but it will be the most effective form of vengeance because he's the one that vengeance belongs to. And so we need to remember that as Christians. We need to remember that as our culture. We're about out of time, Brother Glenn. Last thoughts? Well, it says this in Proverbs 10, verse 6, Blessings are upon the head of the just but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. So there's just some things to think about, you know, as we, as as Christians, as we keep our heads looking up, looking for that return of Jesus, knowing that there's going to be things that are going on. Um, you know, it's it's not a thing to just bury your head in the sand and be be uh, blinded in, in regards to to knowing what's going on. Uh, but again, being about our Savior, being about His business, is what we need to be doing as we approach these last days you know the bottom line is the prophet jonah he, he was he was a half-hearted preacher he didn't even want to go and preach to the city of nineveh but god put him through whale university and ultimately jonah's like okay god i'll go and he goes into the middle of the city and he makes a simple sermon he says yet 40 days and nineveh shall be overthrown and, uh, no poems no no illustrations just a declaration and the king of Nineveh and the entire city it, the bible says they repented in sackcloth and ashes now notice what the king of Nineveh said he said let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands so violence was part of the the city of Nineveh's culture the king of Nineveh said we got to turn away from this because god's getting ready to judge us and i've got some red letters here in my Bible spoken by the Lord Jesus Christ and he said the men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonas and behold a greater than Jonas is here folks we've got the red letters of Jesus Christ we've got his preaching we've got his sermon and we need to do the same thing that Jesus was admonishing the Jews in his day we need to repent if the Ninevites could repent at a message like yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown certainly we can repent when we've got the message of the cross of Calvary the love of God and the salvation that God has provided through his precious son the Lord Jesus Christ America Statesville our community we need to repent of our violence and we need to let God take care of what only he can God bless you have a great day appreciate you taking the time to join us at Salt and Light. It is our desire that you experience the joy of following Jesus Christ. He loves you and he died on the cross for your sins. He will give you hope, peace, and eternal life if you will repent of your sins and trust him as your savior. You may see yourself as a good person, but you will never be good enough to deserve heaven. You may see yourself as bad, but you can never be too bad for Jesus to forgive you. You can call upon him to save you this very moment. If you are a born-again Christian, 
We want to encourage you to obey Christ's command and be salt and light to those around you. We encourage you to find a Bible-believing church that does not compromise or water down the Bible. Get involved serving the Lord. If you have a Bible question or a particular issue you would like us to discuss on Salt and Light, visit our website at templebaptistnc.com. Click on the Salt and Light link. Once again, that's templebaptistnc.com. May the Lord bless you. We hope you'll join us again next week.